In this episode of Lift Art Builds, I practice TIG welding with my TIG welder making a card for it. He sure does. <laughs> I sh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Wyatt. What's going on, brother? We're spying on Wyatt today. So Wyatt brought his TIG welder in the shop, which is a really nice Lincoln. I'm not usually a fan of Lincoln, but I, I like- I read blue still. Yeah. I like Miller's, I but- I love this thing. This thing, it is a really nice machine and needs more love than at my house. And I need to be better at TIG welding. So I know we've got a, we've got some stainless stuff coming up and I'd like to be able to uh, actually be on that job. Um, so if my TIG welding is up to par, then I can weld on that big job. If it's not, <laughs> I'll just be the cut man. I'll be cutting everything and be like, here go Tay, you put it together and weld it. Well, that so, is the thing with stainless and TIG welding in general, the goal is that the whole reason to TIG is that you don't have to go back over it and grind it down or whatever. Yeah. I almost want to say that you're not even really supposed to grind it down. Like you're supposed to weld probably. it, clean the weld and go, I'm probably completely wrong. It's important to remember one thing, you're wrong. Not only is there no chance that you'll ever be right, all signs suggest you will never even come close once in your lifetime. But it's nice as a, because this stainless is expensive, which means the things we build out of stainless are to the customer expensive. And so when they can see stacked dimes, it's just like, oh good, yeah. they know what they're doing, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, that's your mission, to learn how to <laughs> take better. Stag take better. So what we're planning on doing today is, since I'm bringing it over here, my cart at my shop is a whole lot different. It's a bunch of different setup and I can't bring it with me. Anyway, I need to build a new cart. So if I build a new cart, I might as well use this machine to sit here and do it. That way, I just have more practice, more time on it, getting everything right. And if I'm building a, uh, a TIG cart out of mild steel, if I screw up, what's the, what's the, there's no, there's not much of a issue. How do you say? Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do, you, you want, you. There's not well, the customer, the customer is not going to be mad because the customer is <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I have some material laying around, some inch and a quarter angle. So why don't you show us the design though? So I'm essentially going to run the outer dimensions. So where this fits in snug, and I'm going to keep it coming past for the bottle to, come, to, to hit. And then I'm going to make a slightly larger version on the bottom where the wheels go so I can lift this up, have a little bit of space underneath. I can put some hooks, I can put my cables, I can put random things. Um, and I've got an extra dolly at home that I'm gonna steal the casters off of. I told Wyatt he could have all the material he wanted if he filmed it for you guys. So we'll see how he does. So I should make a much more elaborate cart then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna change this. I was doing yeah, something weird, but then the weird thing that I was looking, thinking about is if I run everything on a center pivot point right here, then the top has an ability to, yeah, it's not gonna be to very pivot. Stable. So I think I'm just going to do angle straight up. I might do one right here. I might put it at an angle. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't want this to be able to twist, but I want to be able to access everything easily from all sides. I don't want a cage that I have to stick my hand mm -hmm. into. It's one thing that bothers me on most other designs, like this one that you've got. It's a wonderful design, but it's big. Not only that, all the hooks are on the outsides. So every time we put it in and out, we gotta worry about the, the torch hitting everything, all the wires hitting everything. If I could lift the machine up and put the wires underneath, then whenever we're moving it, we can keep everything from the outside so it's not, nothing's getting caught. That's my goal. We'll see how he does. So yeah, all in all, you're probably gonna come out a lot better than I did. Foreshadowing is a narrative device. Well, mine's gonna look a little more rough. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Let's see if we can find some. That's true, at least mine's all powder coated. Yeah. Break a leg, sir. There's my bottom piece and my top piece. And um, and I'm gonna make a cut list with 
some kind of shorthand to insinuate what kind of miters that I want to do. And uh, yeah, and then I'm going to start cutting them. There's some tools over here at this shop that I just don't have that I'm going to use to make my product better at the end of the day. But at home, when I make my cuts, especially on a 45 degree miter to make a 90 degree angle, um, I'll take and make the cut slightly larger. And what that ends up doing is it makes, it takes away a little bit of material. So what I've got right here at a 90 degree angle, I'll just have a carpenter square. Um, the reason I did that is because if I were to mesh these two together perfectly, right here in this right there it looks like a 90 degree angle but it's not it's about an 89 degree angle so what's going on is i've got a little bit of play in there now what that does is that lets me tack and tack right at the corner and then i can move things around because i know i'm going to have a gap right here so that also gives me a little bit of uh, more material that i need to put in to get a stronger weld at the end of the day so what i'm going to do is I'll be tack tacking and I'll be finishing out cleaning all this up and welding the back side. But that's just the tip I wanted to show you. What I'm going to end up using are these. And these are corner, corner clamps. clamps. So essentially I'm doing the same thing except I've got them in these lovely clamps. And I'll take four of them and I'll do all sides. I'll take everything and I'll flip it over and weld the back side because uh, I want to weld the corner and I want to weld this flat back side after I clean it up and get everything straight. So, little tip, hope that helps somebody. So right now I'm at the spot where I've got everything clamped, the two welds that I want to weld. These pieces are too short for how big these are. Um, so I went ahead and set up the TIG welder and this is where I say, Dad, I need help. I'm busy. <laughs> well, for starters, this cup is way too big. Unless you're welding giant quarter inch steel gas is going all over the place. That's probably a big reason why you're having the rosters. So I don't know everything about TIG welding. I know very little actually, but I know that you need to size your tungsten to your filler metal. And all of that needs to be sized relatively toward the thickness of steel. So Wyatt had a giant, this big fat cup on his torch, which isn't really necessary, especially for steel. Steel does not really care that much about contamination, not as much as like stainless or aluminum. So we're gonna put on a number six and I gave him a 2% seriated tungsten, which should be just fine for steel, stainless steel. When you get tungsten out of the case, it's obviously blunt and this is gray, which is 2% seriated. Wyatt did a pretty shallow point. This is one of those things where TIG welders will yell at each other for hours on the internet about which one's right. Mm -hmm. I just know that the longer the chamfer and the more gradual it gets to that point, typically the more arc stability I've, I have. That's about what I go for, about 3 16 uh, You should be good to go. I'll, I can do one or two just to see if we got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Working. TIG welding is all about being comfortable. The less comfortable you are, the shittier your weld is going to be. I'll turn the gas flow up just a bit. I'd say that's more stable than mine is sometimes. Well, there's nothing wrong with the machine. You mind if I finish this off? I'd prefer you to. Sure. Just focus on keeping that arc perpendicular as much as you can and keeping it as close as you can. And go full bore immediately. 
You want to catch that heat up. Start it without filler. Don't start it on the filler. Get that puddle going first. So, just to show you, Tay did all this. Oh, it's warm. Tay did all that. He had also done this and this and this. So my two little bits were right here. Let me get that. Right here and right there. Not as good, but it's not functional. Horrendous. But it's also not quite customer grade. So yesterday I was excited and the welder did really nice and it was uh, I've noticed that one of my biggest issues was gas shielding. I had my flow a little too high, I had my cup too big, um, my tungsten wasn't ground right. It was all kinds of little stuff and, and I was fighting the TIG welder. Um, you shouldn't have to fight it at all. But um, so right now my big goal is just to go ahead and weld up these uh, these little boxes and um, just for more practice on the TIG. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up and, um, and tell you how it did once I'm done. I got the top piece almost done. I still have to do some work to hold in the tank and everything. I'm excited to see your but, design. But really, if you look at that. Look at that. I'm really excited about that. Look at what he's doing with the right settings. It's crazy. With the right settings, it's so much easier to get done. Uh, I was trying to weld upward right here and I was having a hard time getting the puddle to start. So it looks pretty boogery and goobery. Um, so good word. good word. I like that. But like with these, I didn't even, um, I didn't even grind off the mill scale on this one piece. So it came out pretty decent, but you can tell there's still a little bit of a uh, little bit of voids. So I had to cut some stuff apart. Um, so I essentially tacked all the corners um, and now I'm about to stick it in the fixturing table and jig it up to where I can push the sides a little bit and hold it in a place to get it as square as I can. I'm gonna keep on rocking on some of these, um, on, this, on this part, on this cart. Why it's doing good, y'all. Just welded up the second one and things went lovely. I had one corner that was a pretty wide gap and honestly it was kind of fun just to just to play with my heat settings, um, back it up and see if I can pulse in order to get that. It's not great, but it's not bad. That was a pretty wide gap on the underside. You might be able to see it a little better how that right there is a pretty wide gap. It's hard to see. But anyway, overall, my welds are looking pretty decent. I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I like, the biggest part of this whole thing is just sitting here practicing and the biggest downfall that I seem to be having is the inside corners, the inside corners. I tell you, man, once we get you on a gas lens, your life is gonna change. Good. So, and this whole thing, what I'm gonna do next, I'd like to put um, a board in here. The, the tank fits just inside of here. I need to cut out on the inside of this. So let's fit it. And then what I would like to do is just take a band and loop it around. So 
that's uh, that's the goal right here on this side. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You should be. That's I'm good. Happy. It's been fun to see you over here, man, doing some precision fabrication. Yeah. Anyway. Good. I'll uh, I'll show it to you when it's done. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit, Juan. Ah! Well, damn it, why? Why doesn't it fit? Because I'm smart. All this work and it doesn't fit. It almost fits. <laughs> so you're almost done. I'm almost. I bet you if you put a piece of plywood in there, it'll raise it up a bit past those radius points. Probably. And oh it'll God. fit. I got like a quarter inch. Yeah, I might just throw a strap on it. Come on, finish it properly. <laughs> well, I mean, piece of plywood. Yeah, strap it on. Well, it's, it makes sense. Plywood and strap. Ah! So if I look at the measurements, the outside measurement is eight and a half, which right here is eight and eight and three eighths. Yeah. Yeah, and you lost a quarter inch because that's eighth inch material. I was planning for an eighth inch. Because I'm smart. I won't need my high school diploma anymore. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. But anyway, put a piece of plywood in there. And it'll lift it just fine. Like a glove. It's, it's less in than and, and more on. Yeah. So overall, I'd say that's a pretty clean little. It is clean. I do like the idea of the cables underneath. I didn't think I'd like that at first. And in practice, you may find something that doesn't work, but it looks it's all right. It's lovely small. It's great. Yeah. Simple. And compact. So the only issues is the only things getting in the way is just the wires right here. Maybe I'll stick a a piece down here just to keep this. Yeah, but what it's not it's not in the way of anything. Yeah, it's when it's moving. Yeah, but when you're moving at a point. You're going down up and down an airplane. I'm trying to keep your shop neat. Well, what's left? Casters, a paint Caster, job. Casters and paint. And a ratchet strap. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> well, it's precision painting service. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Thursday morning and Wyatt has, um, well, in his mind, finished his uh, welding cart. Tell, tell the people what you've, you've built here and how you've uh, put the cherry on top. <laughs> well, I did a little paint. The paint is phenomenal, I, I must say. I mean, it matches, it's red and red. It's awesome. Know? That's not the thing I think people are going to have an issue with. Well, here. let me let me give, let me tell you this. One. I had a um, a dolly at home, and I was going to steal the casters off of the dolly, and then weld them to the bottom, bolt them to the bottom of this. And then I brought the dolly, and the uh, without measuring or anything, the chassis of this welding car just fit perfectly in this old dolly. And so I don't want to rip apart my dolly <laughs> to, <laughs> to satisfy the cart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I come across some uh, or buy some more casters and something like that later down the line. But right now it's even more stable. It works. It's captivated. It's just 
It... <laughs> it's... Look, I'm a function over form type of person. Oh, we know. I, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, sure, we sure know. But, well, speaking of function, look at this. I'm going to quit giving you shit for a minute. And look at this nice cable storage solution down here. I'm loving it because, you know, in my opinion, some of the some of the parts of it. I'm going to do the ground cable first all the way to the TIG cable. Ground cable, pedal, TIG cable. That way you don't put your TIG torch down and then trip over it, do anything while you're messing with your ground cable. It's just one more step that you could potentially screw up your cup. He, he left my torch on the floor like four times yesterday, I did. but he's got all these rules that I've never seen him practice. <laughs> Look, I try to pre-think and then I screw it up. You know? uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a perfect person. Uh -uh. It's, a handsome, it's a handsome rig from the, uh, from the waist up. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say. <laughs> well, there you go. That's as close as a finished reveal as you guys are getting. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate your support. Let us know what you think of Wyatt's solution down in the comments. <laughs> and usually I say be nice, but you know, in this case, no, no, just nice. say what you want to say. Say what you, say what you mean, <laughs> yeah. say what you think. And it's all right. You know, but the point of this whole thing was to practice tigging. It's true. And the exciting part of it is that I feel more comfortable with the TIG torch in hand. I feel like in my mind, it's a total success. Sure. No matter what the cart looks like or what the cart, I feel like a more competent welder um because of this project you and, should and i've since put him to work on some other stuff and and hard positions like that sign behind yeah. you and i was definitely slow um but yeah. that takes time we all yeah. are when we start well nice work thank you brother looks good and you know what i don't have to drag it around anymore That's so true. functionally we're there we're there absolutely like subscribe comment or don't see you on the next one